happened? What? What, what, what? What the hell is this? Harumph, 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 harumph. I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. Give the governor harumph. Harumph. You watch your ass. I see you shiver with anticipation. Let the show begin. Hey everybody, this is David Heretic coming at you with another edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. And today we are going to react to a very, very heavily requested video. Uh, a lot of people wanted me to react to this. And I'm going to name them all. Don't worry, your name will be mentioned, I promise. Okay, so we are reacting today to... Now... I'm not sure if this is Pearl Jam or just Eddie Vedder. According to the title, it's just Eddie Vedder. So, we're going to go with that. Uh, this is Eddie Vedder covering Masters of War. This is a uh, Bob Dylan cover. This is a tribute concert to Bob Dylan, apparently. And I guess Eddie Vedder was the only one that came out on stage from Pearl Jam to do this. I'm guessing. I don't know. Uh, that's what the title says. So anyway, this was very heavily requested. I'm going to go down the the, the watch uh, the, the list here. So uh, starting off, Watchdog, Mike Clare, Greg Archer, Feel It Rising, uh, Mickey A, Kimberly Brett Kurtz, Larry Parker, Your Average Joe 42, Paul Doc Music, My Brother, and... Patrick Ilnitsky. I believe that's how you pronounce that. Ilnitsky. Il, yeah. I-L-N-I-T-Z-K-I. Ilnitsky. I'm hoping that's right. <coughs> anyway. Uh, it might be Ilnitsky, but or I, I doubt it. I'm pretty sure it's Patrick Ilnitsky. Anyway, like I said, a lot of people. And listen, there might be more that requested this. I might have missed you. If that's the case, please let me know in the comments so I can give credit where credit's due. So anyway, this is... A live performance. It was posted by Director's Cat. <coughs> Director's Cat. Take that for what it's worth. Uh, 1,000. Oh, sorry, not 1,000. 151,550 views. It's a pretty respectable number. It's more number. Hey, it's more views than I have. So we're going to react to this today. A uh, link to the original video will be down in the description. So you can check it out at your leisure. Other than that, I do believe we are ready to go. Are you ready? Are you ready? Because here we go. All right, here we go. Eddie Vedder. See, it just says Eddie Vedder. It doesn't say Pearl Jam. Eddie Vedder, Masters of War, Tribute, Bob Dylan, 30th Anniversary. Cool. All right, let's get to it. Masters of war, you that build all the guns, you that build the death blades, you that build all the guns, you that hide behind walls, you that hide behind desks. This is definitely like. 90s. This is early, 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 early Eddie Vedder. Um, is it me or does he just look really stiff? Like he looks, I hate to say it, he looks scared. Like really nervous. Then again, this might be the biggest crowd he's ever performed in. I, I, I don't know where this is. I, I don't know where this performance lies in Pearl Jam's timeline of popularity. I don't know if they were playing to tens of thousands of people yet in stadiums across the nation that they may still be doing the bar scene for all I know at this point. I mean, they are bars and clubs. I mean, I, I don't know. They may be used to playing in front of hundreds of people and there may, and if I'm not mistaken that the Bob Dylan tribute concert, there was like, I think there was like 45,000 people in attendance. I think that's what the number was. I'm not hundred percent sure about that number. If you know the exact number, leave it below in the comments. Cause I, I'd like to know. Anyway, let's keep going. 
I just want you to know I can't see through your mask. Oh, that I fade back. Ah. You've never done nothing but to build and destroy. You play with my world. Vocally, he's killing it. I mean, he's doing a great job with his vocals. Again, I, I, I got to mention how I appreciate vocalists who don't rely on vibrato. I, I love vocalists who are able to just sustain a note, keep it right on pitch, and not rely on vibrato to hide their imperfections. And he's doing that. He's, he's doing a great job of it. Can't help but notice that Harky stack back here. I used to play through Harkies. I used to love Harky. Um, I use Ampegs now, but I used to have a, a deep appreciation for Harkies. They were really cool. Anyway, let's keep going. You put a drug in my head, and then you hide from my eyes. Then you turn and run farther when the fast bull is flying, like Judas Sobo. See, there it is again. He's holding that note, no vibrato, holding it flat-lined, and it's in, it's in great pitch. Great pitch. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Keep it going. Keep it going. But I see through your eyes And I see through your brain Like I see through the water there Passing all the triggers for the others to fire. Then you sit back and watch while the death count gets higher. I could totally see now, I, I, now listen, I don't know how this concert was put together. I don't know how songs were assigned. I don't know who had the say in the song selection but knowing how pearl jam the little i know about pearl jam i could totally see why eddie vader picked this song from a lyrical standpoint i get it it it, it totally falls from what i understand it falls in with his with his beliefs i think eddie vader was born in the wrong era i think eddie vader should have been born in like the 50s so he could have been around and perform. Actually, maybe even the '40s. So he could have been around and performed at Woodstock because I think he would have fit in perfectly with them and their ideals and their mindset. And there's nothing wrong with their ideals and mindset at all. I I totally appreciate it because um, I have a lot of the same beliefs myself. So not gonna get into that part though. Anyway, let's keep going. You hide in your mansion while young people. out of their bodies and is buried in the mud you've thrown the worst fear that could ever be hurled the fear to bring children into this world for threatening my I like that. We got to bring that back. We got to bring that back. We got to hear that again. That was great. I love how he stayed on the note. Even when everything else progressed, he stayed on his note. Everything else moved up. He didn't. And then he did come up and took it over and above. Check this out. This was brilliant. Into this world. See what I mean? It stayed. Threatening my baby. Yeah, that was well done. 
really well done. Uh, very tasteful. The more I hear him sing, the more I appreciate him as a vocalist. I'm, I'm, I'm still not a fan. Okay, I'm not a fanboy, but I, I am a definitely gaining more and more appreciation for his vocal talent and his vocal ability. So, yeah, good stuff. Let's keep it going. Mandolin. How much do I know to talk out of turn? You might say that I'm yours. It's getting, he's, <clears throat> what's the word I'm looking for? He's getting more on edge. <clears throat> I think is what the word I'm looking for. He's starting to project more. Not as, I mean, he was never breathy, but he had a, a certain amount of breathiness to his voice because he was holding it back. And that's, that's normal. But that breathiness at this point disappeared. Now he's, he's on edge. Um, it's like the difference between laying back in your seat and sitting on the edge of your seat. It, you're still sitting. It's just your your attitude has changed, and his attitude has changed right now, which is where you in this point of the song. That's what you want. You want a little bit of an attitude change, you know. That's great. Let's keep it going. But there's one thing I know. Though I'm younger than you, even Jesus would never forgive what you do. Harsh. Ask you one question Is your money there good? Will it buy you forgiveness? Do you think that it could? Oh, I... Fall offs are always risky when they're overly done. Uh, I mean, every vocalist, every vocalist is guilty of doing fall-offs. Some do it more subtly than others. Some will do it to the point where you can't even tell that it's a fall-off, but it's still a fall-off. It's still there. And then there are vocalists who do it too much. Um, either for effect whether it be comedic or dramatic, it's interpretational, or they're not even aware of it. Um, his fall-offs, what I mean by fall-off is he'll hold a note and then it'll, it'll, it'll pitch off. It'll, it'll, it'll fall off. Uh, I like his fall-offs, and I'll, I'll tell you why. His fall-offs are not linear. They don't... Give me a... Uh, give me a piece of paper or something. Okay, here we go. All right, so... Here's how a lot of people do their fall-offs. Like that. Flat... Boom, and it just, you know, sharply drops. And it's very, it's very linear. What I like about his, if I could, I'm going to try my best to do this. Here's his. It curves. It goes, and it, it curves. It's not sharp. It's not drastic. It's not overly dramatic. And it's not overly, no, I mean, it's noticeable, but it's not overly noticeable. It's a lot more subtle. But it has that curvature that softens the blow, I guess is a good way of putting it. And I like that. I like that. I like that a lot. I think it fits his vocal style really well. Anyway, let's let's keep going. We got we got some more time here. Thank you. So, 
and I hope that you die And your death will come soon I couldn't help but notice that right before he started the phrase, he kind of looked down. I have a feeling he's got a lyric sheet down there. Not that he doesn't know the song. He just he probably needs a lyric sheet as a reminder of, oh, yeah, we're doing this verse now. You know, this is not an easy song to memorize uh, as far as vocally goes. It's it's not there, there's a lot of verses. There's, there's a lot. There's a lot of moving parts and it's not always easy to keep it in order. So. He probably has a cheat sheet down there. I just couldn't help but notice that he looked down. And I was like, ah, cheat sheet. That's okay. Hey, listen, you do what you got to do, man. You got you do what you got to do to get through the performance. If that's what you need to do, then do it. Just do it slyly like he did right there. I mean, I caught it. I was kind of looking for it. In all honesty, I was kind of looking for it. Anyway, let's finish this off. Yes, let's finish this. Let's finish this. Follow your casket. In the pale afternoon And I walk as your Lord Into your deathbed And I'll stand over your grave Till I'm sure that you're dead Couldn't help but notice that he shook the mandolin player's hand, but he didn't shake the guitar player's hand. Ooh, what a diss. What a diss. Well, there you have it, folks. That was Eddie Vedder uh, doing the Bob Dylan tune, Masters of War, live at the Bob Dylan 30th Anniversary Tribute Concert. Okay, thoughts on that. Uh, very heavily requested. I can see why. It was a really really well done performance it was really able to show off Eddie Vedder's vocals uh big time highlighting on his vocals there which is which is good it, again it gave me a much deeper appreciation for him as a vocalist both from his talent and from his ability and there is a difference between the two uh, having said that uh you suck not exactly the most high energy performance, but it's not supposed to be. Listen, Bob Dylan songs are not meant to be high energy tunes. They're supposed to be subdued, laid back, make you think and chill out type of tunes. I get it. Um, so, you know, it is exactly what it was supposed to be. Um, he did a great job on the tune. He did the, he did the song justice. His vocal ability of never having to rely on vibrato, love that. I, 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 can, I just can't speak enough about that. It's there are not a whole lot of vocalists that can do that. That can hold a note in pitch, perfectly in pitch, and not need to rely on vibrato to hide their little imperfections. You know, oh, he's going out three or four cents flat. Let's pull some vibrato on there to cover it up. No, he doesn't do that. I do have a question. I noticed this in his this video. I've seen it a couple other times from him. He has a tendency to roll his eyes into the back of his head like he's dead or something. Is that a conscious thing? Like, is he doing that on purpose? Or is that just like a subconscious thing that he's he just does and he doesn't really think about it? He just, it just happens. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a fan, so I don't know. If, for, those of you, for those of you that are big fans of Pearl Jam, could you tell me if that's the case? Which way? Which way that goes? Is he intentionally rolling his eyes in the back of his head for effect? Or is it something that he just unconsciously or subconsciously does and doesn't really think about it? It just happens. I don't know. Let me know in the comments, please. Let me know. Um, overall, I mean, it was a good performance. It was a really good performance. I, I dug it. Um, is it something I would add to my playlist? Something I would listen to over and over again? No. No, I, I wouldn't add this to my playlist. Not something I would listen to over and over again. I might go back and watch that again, though, if I was in the mood for it. I, I might. I, I very well... I, I could see myself going back and listening to it maybe, you know, two or three times a year, you know? And listen, for me, that says a lot. You know, the fact that I would even go back and revisit it, that's a huge deal. That's a fact. Taking everything into account, giving that a score on a scale of 1 to 10... Get on with it. Yes, get on with it. Uh, get on with it. I'll give that about a 7.3.
7.3. Again, great performance, uh, very small, compact. Uh, we're talking about three individuals on the stage, guitar, mandolin, and Eddie Vedder on vocals. Um, small, intimate setting in a huge arena. Sometimes that's, sometimes that can feel a little awkward. Not gonna lie, it can feel a little awkward being on that huge stage in front of all those people and having just three people. Although, Crosby, Stills, and Nash did it, so... And they did it in front of 500,000 people, their second ever show. Haha, <laughs> go figure that one out. Yeah, Woodstock, that was their second performance ever as a group. And they did it in front of over half a million people. That must have been mind-blowing. God, I wish I could have been there for that. Anyway, uh, getting back to this, 7.3 because it's not my cup of tea. You know, it's not something I would, like I said, I'll never put this on my playlist. Uh, but I do appreciate the effort and the talent and the ability and the thought that went into it. It was a really well done job. Like I said though, it just isn't my cup of tea. All right, so 7.3, final score, I have spoken. Well, that's gonna be it for this edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the show. Hopefully I was able to entertain you. If I was able to put a smile on your face and brighten your day, then I did my job and I'm so glad I could do it. If you did enjoy the video and you would like to see more videos like this, feel free to join the fan base and click that button down there to do so. Uh, yeah, you know the button I'm talking about, that button. Yeah, you click that button and you join the fan base. You become one of us, which is pretty awesome. Now look, for whatever reason, if you don't want to join the fan base, it doesn't matter what the reason is. That's okay. I still respect you. If you did enjoy the video, please give that video a thumbs up. It'll help me out quite a bit and it will do you absolutely no harm. Also, there is a bell that you can click on that will notify you when new content gets dropped by this channel. So if you want to stay in the know, click that bell. It'll keep you in the know. Until next time, this is David Heretic signing off, reminding you to stay fabulous and support each other. Later. Peace.